Hey guys, in this short video I'm going to talk about some magical, mysterious code from the tutorials um, that is really helpful on try it number three. Now this uh, video was inspired by two students who stopped by my Zoom session this morning and they basically had the question of why does this code from the tutorials work? Which I think is a very fair question. So I'm going to kind of go over that real briefly and hopefully in the, you know, the next three or four minutes um, you're going to feel pretty confident about why this code works and why it should work. Um, all right, so what do we have going on here? We have a situation where, where we are given the gradient of some function, and we are trying to reconstruct that original function. And, and the technique in this block of code is, okay, here's the gradient, and we are going to set a fixed point somewhere in 3D space, or yeah, somewhere in 3D space, a fixed point ABC. Now, uh, we're also gonna set a variable point where we're imagining that this capital XYZ represents any point you want in 3D space. And then we connect a point, or connect a line, we draw a line between those two points. So starting at a fixed point ABC and going to any variable point, um, capital X, capital Y, capital Z in three-dimensional space. And that's just the standard equation for a line. And then somehow, when you integrate the gradient in this problem and this, the tangent vector for this line, uh, where t goes from 0 to 1, you're somehow supposed to magically get um, the equation for f of xyz. Uh, well, the secret behind all of this is chain rule. Uh, once you see the chain rule in this problem, it actually all comes together pretty quickly. So look at this integrand right here, the integral of gradient dot tangent. You guys already know that gradient dot tangent is df dt. That's the 3D chain rule there. Um, if you don't believe me, we could always use Mathematica to verify that this equality is true. But of course, you guys already know it's true because it's from an earlier chapter. But let's do it anyway. I'm going to take the dot product here of gradient dot tangent, and I'm going to ask Mathematica, is it true that this is df dt? And of course, Mathematica does return true. Um, what that means is this weird looking integral, we could replace it with something a little bit more familiar. So I'm going to replace the integral above with the same integral, but instead of that dot product in the integrand, I'm going to put df dt there. Um, now in code, that might not look very helpful. Uh, so let's format this using kind of more traditional calculus notation. And that's what we have right here, the integral of df dt where t varies from 0 to 1. Now you guys are all calculus BC experts, right? You guys all did very well in the calc BC exam, so you know what the integral of a derivative is. The integral of a derivative by the fundamental theorem of calculus is that function back again. The only thing we have to do is because it's a definite integral, we have to plug in t equals one and t equals zero. And when we do that, we get f of x of one, y of one, z of one, minus f of x of zero, y of zero, z of zero. Now, what you have to remember is that this x of one, y of one, z of one, and this x of 0, y of 0, z of 0, we know what those equal because we picked the line connecting the fixed point and the variable point uh, at the beginning of this setup. So you could, I mean, you could have Mathematica do the work, but you already know what those are going to equal. So let's run this. f of x of 1, y of 1, z of 1 is f of capital X, Y, Z. Um, our, our uh, f of x, y, z evaluated at any point in 3D space, and our f of x of 0, y of 0, z of 0, well, um, our line started at the fixed point a, b, c. So this is some constant f of a, b, c. So we could plug those results into the analysis that we were doing, and here it is. Okay, so this whole jumble of code starts with a gradient, and it returns f of capital XYZ minus f of ABC. Um, and that might not look super useful, but it's actually exactly what we're looking for, right? Because we were trying to start with the gradient and reconstruct the original surface. Well, this is the original surface, right? Um, X, capital XYZ are just cleared variables. We could replace them with lowercase XYZ at this point. The only reason we made them capital was so that our code didn't kind of conflict with itself. Um, we didn't want variables to collide, but now that we're done with running Mathematica code, put lowercase back in there. So we have the equation for f of x, y, z here, 
and then minus f of abc, which might concern you at first, but remember that's just a constant. Um, and that's what we expect integration to do, right? We Integration, we expect it to return our answer up to a constant. Um, think about back in Calc BC, when you took an indefinite integral, those answers always included a constant of integration. So, you know, this is essentially our plus C at the end. We're not going to get worked up about that because um, we, we already know that our integral produces an answer that's unique up to a constant. And in this case, the value for your constant will just depend on what you picked for your fixed point. Um, anyway, guys, so I hope that is helpful. What you can see is uh, this code really does start with the gradient of a function and then returns the original function. All right, uh, good luck on Triad 3. Feel free to use any of this material in your Triad 3 and have a great day.